Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's presentation. We're so excited that you're with us today. My name is Meredith Medlin, and I serve as the Director of Partnerships and Impact for Axion Opportunity Fund. Just as we're waiting for more people to log in and join our conversation, I'm going to quickly give you a few logistics about our Zoom webinar today before we get started. So first, you should be able to see our screen currently if you've joined us by computer through the Zoom window. So in that Zoom window, there's also a black toolbar that contains a chat button. I'd love it if you could locate that chat button and click on it so the chat box is open for you. And you can feel free to type in any questions you have throughout the presentation today into that chat box. Um, we encourage you to type your questions for our presenter as you think of them so you don't forget them once we get to question and answer session time at the end of the presentation. So we'll allow plenty of time for questions at the end based on what's typed into that chat box. We'll also be using the Zoom polling feature today so you can interact with us a little bit more and we can learn a little bit about you. Um, so please participate in those polls as you're prompted throughout the presentation. Next, just a quick note that we are recording this conversation so you can review the information at a later time. I'm going to send a recording of uh, the presentation via email to send you a quick link. It'll be easy for you to watch back uh, and review this information at a later time. And lastly, when the webinar concludes today, uh, you will be prompted to take a very short survey for us. So please do take just a couple of minutes to give us your feedback on the presentation. We really value your opinion. So we appreciate you in advance taking the time to do that for us. All right, now all of our logistics are out of the way so we can do a quick round of introductions so you know who's joining you today. First, I can share a bit about our organization. At Axion Opportunity Fund, we work closely with small business owners to provide them with fairly priced loans, but also educational resources and coaching and networking support to support their business success. Our clients have been locked out of traditional financial service offerings in the past, but we provide them with fast and personalized service so they can grow towards sustainability. We offer our services across the nation so we can help a small business owner regardless of their location. And the scale of our work allows us to grow our impact while advancing racial, gender, and economic justice for everybody. In this amazing work, we are so lucky to have fantastic partner organizations that share our mission to empower small business owners. And we're really excited today to be partnering with the Central Valley Community Foundation, as well as funding Fresno for this presentation. So now I'm really pleased to introduce my colleague, Sherela Nicholson, the program officer at the Central Valley Community Foundation, who can share a bit about CVCF's work. Thanks for your partnership, Sherela. Thank you, Meredith. I'm Sherela Nicholson, Program Officer for Central Valley Community Foundation, as Meredith mentioned. And I um, manage the economic development portfolio for the foundation. And one of those include the pro, um, a three-year grant from JP Morgan Chase, Pro Neighborhoods, Partnership Raising Opportunities for Neighborhoods. And this program deploys capital in five zip codes in Fresno that have the greatest need, working with small business owners and also supporting education and training around infill development. Um, we've created this really cool ecosystem um, and Tate is gonna share more about that. Um, and the ecosystem will outlive the grant, which is great. Um, and so it's great to have a partnership with Opportunity Fund um, funding Fresno um, and Access Plus Capital. So you guys are in for a treat and I will turn it over to Tate. Thanks, Shreyla. And uh, thank you to Meredith and the Opportunity uh, Fund uh, partners. And um, just want to uh, thank them for the partnership as a part of Funding Fresno. It's a resource for small businesses and those that work with small businesses to help connect them to of uh, 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 access to capital, uh, lending opportunities, and technical assistance. It's a collaboration of, of a number of community development financial institutions like, uh, like um, uh, Opportunity Fund, uh, Community Vision, Access Plus Capital, and a number of other organizations that are here to be a support and resource to small businesses. So you can uh, learn more about the resources available through Funding Fresno at fundingfresno.com. 
uh, on there. You'll learn about the collaborative, uh, the partners that are working uh, to support small businesses. And also there are links to our, our platform that can help uh, connect you to, to a variety of lending sources uh, and also technical assistance in your area, along with up, upcoming other workshops uh, like this one uh, that's today, which is a really great uh, topic. Uh, you know, I, I, I probably should be staying on and always learning a few more tidbits uh, myself, uh, but you can also learn about uh, workshops and events like this also on Funding Fresno. So again, thank you. Thank you for the investment also that you're making into your business to learn more about how do you plan for cash flow uh, cash flow needs. So with that, I'm going to give it back to Meredith. Excellent. Thank you so much, Tate and Sherela, for your partnership on this. Uh, we are so lucky to have so many fantastic organizations collaborating with us in this way. So now that you all know who we are, I'm really pleased to introduce my colleague, Luis Ramos, who will be our presenter today. Uh, Luis is AOF's Director of Business Advising, and he has nearly a decade of experience coaching entrepreneurs as they start and grow businesses. Thanks for being with us, Luis. My pleasure, my pleasure. Looking forward to giving this uh, little talk about cash flow. So um, with that said, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, so cash flow. So what, what are we, what will we learn today? So for the sake of this webinar, I will be turning my camera off shortly, uh, just because I do like to drive all of the attention to the actual presentation as well. So I will be doing that right now, just to kind of give you guys a heads, heads up. Okay, so what will we learn today? So cash flow is really one of those concepts that a lot of individuals tend to struggle with. Um, as I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, I found that the easiest way to explain that concept is really through organization. So cash flow is really the, the ability to be organized as a business owner, um, really understanding kind of like where your money's going, where it's coming from, uh, what your costs look like. It's just really understanding like how well are you organized as a business to really anticipate needs in the near future uh, and just really moving forward with that as well. So today we're going to be learning about tools and strategies for tracking cash flow, the best practices for building your business savings as well, uh, trusted method, methods of anticipating new expenses, and the value of working capital to smooth out cash flow needs in the future as well. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, let's talk about a couple of tools and strategies to kind of help you as a business owner get better organized and uh, really just organize yourself to really just predict your cash flow a lot easier. So what can an organized financial management system do for you? So essentially what an organized financial management system is, is essentially just having like bookkeeping in its most foundational level, right? Do you currently have a bookkeeping system where you're tracking everything that's happening within your business? Um, bookkeeping can be through a third party uh, program like QuickBooks. Um, it could be done by yourself at home uh, through an Excel sheet or, you know, in its most basic form, it's just, you know, having a paper ledger, right? Just writing down like everything that's happening within your business. Uh, today, I spent this much money or I got this much in sales and just making sure that you're always like keeping a tab on it, writing it down somewhere, having receipts, etc. So, the wonders about having a bookkeeping system and organized financial management system is that it helps free up a lot of time and reduce stress. It encourages customers to pay quicker since you'll know exactly when they have to pay you back. Um, ensures vendors are paid on time because you'll have, uh, you know, you'll have a system in place. It makes financial reporting incredibly easy as well. Um, and more importantly, it also simplifies taxes, right? So I've met so many clients over the past couple of years where um, as soon as April is looming by, um, they have their bag of receipts. <laughs> I've seen literal bags of receipts go and, you know, they go to their bookkeeper or their CPA and they, and they say, hey, my taxes are due very soon and I need to get this done as quickly as possible. And what ends up happening uh, by not having an accounting system is that it makes it in incredibly expensive. It takes, it, it consumes a lot of time and money away from you as a business owner, right? Because obviously that bookkeeper, that CPA will say like, well, you're not organized. So, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to charge you extra because I have to spend time looking at everything that you have in this bag of receipts in order to kind of like uh, get it all sorted out. 
Um, more importantly, uh, having a good book bookkeeping system informs strategic decisions. And ultimately, it, it does attract lenders and investors. Um, an investor and a lender will always appreciate having an organized um, management system, right? So as they're working with you, they'll be able to better understand where all, where all your money is going, what the opportunity looks like, whether you're a safe investment or a safe, safe risk, right? And by being organized, it helps el eliminate a lot of the doubts that a lot of lenders and, and investors might have in the near future as well. So let's talk about cash flow statements now. So a cash flow statement in its barest form is really just a way of measuring kind of like the movement of cash within your business, right? It is all of the inflows and outflows of liquid money, right? Uh, so capital, uh, this is the money in your savings account, the money in your checking account. So on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, yearly basis, and even a daily basis in some cases, where's that money going, right? How much money is moving in and out of your business at any period of, you know, at any period of time? Um, especially during seasonal events as well, right? Um, is money moving in and out faster during certain periods, uh, faster during others, right? Or even slower, right? So it really helps list the flows of cash into and out of your business. Um, it helps enable informed decision-making as well because it really helps you understand kind of like how, how money is moving in and, in and out of your business over a certain period of time. It'll really help you understand, hey, um, I'm, starting to run, I'm starting to run low on cash. So what do I have to do in order to mitigate those risks associated with like higher sales, right? If everyone's coming into my business and buying everything up, right? Do I have enough inventory or money to replenish that stock over a period of time, right? Because as many business owners know, is that having money in your business bank account is it's not a reality um, every single day, every single month, right? There will be times that that'll be very lean, and there are times where you'll have plenty. So it's really about balancing that out and really understanding how can you leverage that money that you currently have for greater opportunity in the future. And we'll talk about that shortly. So here is a basic cash flow statement that really just kind of like highlights the movement of money in and out of the business. So the core components of cash flow are simple. It's just cash in and cash out. So this is a snapshot of a cash flow statement that shows how an agricultural business would itemize its cash flow statement, just as an example. The more detailed components of the cash flow statement help you really see what's going on in your business. So every day, and this may be different for every single business, right? It's really understanding. Um, and I usually inform a lot of clients that are trying to build up a cash flow statement to do this on a monthly basis, right? And the easiest way to do this, honestly, is by looking at your business checking account, right? So if I look at my, at my business bank account statement for, let's say, uh, February or last month, right? we can see, hey, you know what? I started with this much cash at the beginning of the month. And at the end of the month, I have this much, much cash left over, right? So was there an increase of cash? Am I, am I getting more money deposited into the account? Or you know what? I'm starting to notice that money is slowly trickling away. Uh, and you can even do like, you can, you can even compare those statements to previous months, uh, three, six months in the past. And just really look at what the, what does that balance look like over a given period of time? Is that money that you're putting into that business account growing or is it shrinking, right? Um, and it could go and there will always be ebbs and flows. It'll always increase or decrease just really depending on the seasonality, the type of business that you currently run, uh, the type of industry that you're currently in. But it's really what's important about having a cash flow statement is really predicting, is this normal for my business, right? is this seasonality or is this low period normal for me? And because if it is, then that's completely fine. Everything's going according to plan. But if at any given point in time, you say, you know what? I'm starting to slowly run out of money in my business bank account. More money is leaving that's coming in. So what does that mean for me as a business owner? Why am I making less money? Or why do I have more expenses, right? Something is different that I really need to tackle. And that might be related to things aren't selling as well. Um, I may need to cut some expenses. Um, I may not be selling as much anymore. So it's really about understanding what are the things that are happening within my business? What is going wrong? So that as a business owner, I can better tackle those issues 
before it gets to a certain point where, you know, my bank account has no money left or even a negative balance at some point in time. So that's really important to know early on. So a cash flow statement really just kind of like details all of this, but in greater detail. So if you look at this example, and um, as, a, as a side note as well, if this, I actually do have this template. So if this is something that you would like to have as well. Um, we can definitely email this out at the end of the presentation as well. Um, so you guys can have a copy of this as well. So as you look at a cash flow statement, it really just shows, you know, on a month to month basis, kind of like, what does that money look like, right? It details all of the money that's coming in through, through sales. And you can even categorize that through different types of revenue streams that you may currently have. But more importantly, what I like to focus and direct the attention of a lot of entrepreneurs is the cash that is being paid out, right? So from your bank statement, you'll be able to kind of plug in a lot of these expenses, right? So how much money went into paying for wages, uh, supplies, repairs, advertising, rent, you know, all of these key operational expenses. So as a business owner, when you start looking into this thing and you can start looking on a month to month basis and saying, hey, you know what? My advertising expenses are going up. Is this normal, right? Is, is maybe the person that I'm doing business with uh, and helping me make flyers or, or, you know, business cards, whatever that may be, are their prices going up? And how is this affecting my bottom line for my business, right? Um, you can look at your utilities. Are they going up? Are they going down? Is this normal? Uh, you can look at your rents, uh, even your wages as well, right? For all of your employees and even the cost of your supplies as well, right? So it's really about understanding what does my, how is my business looking like? What is the health of my business on a month to month basis? And the beauty of a cash flow statement is that it really helps you compare those periods to other periods in the past. So you can start looking at, hey, you know what? Uh, July of last year or March of last year, my statement looked this way. And now looking at it, looking at it this year, a year later, it looks either better, which is great, or you know what? It looks worse. So what's happening, right? And as a business owner, it's always about a constant struggle of, of just adapting and adapting and adapting to really find out, are you doing the best uh, thing possible in order to maintain your business moving forward? And that's really what a cash flow statement does for you. Uh, it's incredibly easy to, to kind of compile, as I mentioned earlier, uh, just, you know, just plug it in with a bank statement. It's incredibly easy. So uh, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but how do you keep your books, right? So as a business owner, being organized is incredibly crucial in order to maintain your cash flow and really to understand the health of your business. Um, what I always tell a lot of entrepreneurs that I work with over the, over, the over the course of several years is that work with the system that works for you. You know what, I've, you know, ideally, you know, in the perfect world, yeah, you'd love to have QuickBooks be your accounting software, right? Um, that you can uh, plug in and just do everything and automate so many different things, right? But the, you know, but we have to definitely live in the reality as well. So what, at the very least for right now, what is the best thing that you can do for your business right now? Even if it's just a paper ledger right now, as long as you're actively organizing it and maintaining it, that's great, right? As long as you're currently organized, sure, it may take more time to do that just because um, it's paper and you have to do a lot more tracking and stuff like that. But as long as you're doing it, that is the most important thing, right? I've worked with a lot of entrepreneurs over the years that say, hey, Luis, I just don't feel comfortable working with computers or I don't understand a certain aspect of, of I don't understand how to maintain QuickBooks or, or Quicken, right? Um, so I feel more comfortable work, work, working with an Excel sheet. That's okay, right? As long as you are actively doing this, that is the best thing to do, right? Yeah, ultimately you can, you know, go to web, other workshops and other webinars to learn about how to access these other tools like QuickBooks and et cetera, right? And there's, there's so many platforms out there that you can use as well. But as long as you're doing something right now today, that is perfect. That is great. So you're doing a good thing. So there are also some cash flow management tools as well that you can use that can automate this for you. Um, a lot of them, uh, a lot of these tools, you can plug in your business bank account and it'll kind of like to start generating these like cash flow statements for you as well. Um, there are some costs associated to these tools, however. So I, just, I will just kind of like let you know as well. Um, we're not affiliated or, or sponsored by any of these programs, but these are some tools that clients of mine have used in the past that I found to be successful as well. So I just wanted to plug them in as well. I won't talk about them too much. 
I will only say that the one that I see a lot of business owners use, especially really small business owners that are uh, maybe in the first year in business and just getting started is a lot of them tend to use the mint tool that is listed at the very end of this slide, um, just because it is free. And a lot of uh, entrepreneurs that I've worked with um, like it because it's, it's fairly easy to, to, to organize your business just because there isn't a lot of details early on or a lot of expenses where you would need something more sophisticated, right? So a lot of, I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs use this system because it's, it's a little bit easier to, to use as well. All right, thanks, Luis. So now we're gonna pause for a second to do a quick poll with our audience. Um, we'd love to hear from you all now that we've talked through a little bit of the details around options for managing your cash flow. So I'm gonna launch this poll um, and would love to hear from y'all how you're tracking your cash flow right now. So go ahead and answer the question. This is completely anonymous. We're just interested in understanding the audience and seeing if folks are using receipts and in your invoices, um, kind of tracking in a spreadsheet like Excel or Google Sheets, or if you've already got software that you're working with, or maybe you have an accountant. As Louis said, everything is uh, helpful. You know what I mean? I mean, anything that you're doing to help track these expenses. Um, can help your business. And if you're not yet tracking, you're in the right place because we're going to help you figure out how to get started with that today. So give just a couple more seconds for a few more responses. All right, so we'll end the poll and I'll share back the results. So Luis, this is great, right? It looks like we've got an interesting spread of people using lots of different tools, but awesome. most people uh, are already using some kind of software. So that's great. That's great. Honestly, this is really good to see. Uh, that means that you guys are definitely doing this right and uh, just, you know, moving forward as well. That's great. I even see some individuals that have a, a, an accountant as well. So that's awesome. So great. ideally, this is definitely something that you you want to implement in your business if you're not currently, uh, just because it makes your life so much easier, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and it makes it a lot easier for you to scale up your business over time as it opens up a lot of doors for financing and um, even investments in the future as well. So you can keep going. So here we have an example. Um, so this is Liz's Luxury Bath Bombs. Uh, so meet Liz. So she is the owner of Liz's Luxury Bath Bombs, a successful online shop on a popular craft-focused sales platform. Liz recently started using an accounting software to track her business income and expenses. Um, so here is her cash flow statement for the past three months. As you can see, Liz has a long cash flow cycle and experiences long periods of low sales followed by huge spikes around certain holidays. She has to buy a lot of materials ahead of time and have a good supply of product before each holiday season starts to have enough product for her customers. So how can Liz manage her finances with such a long and seasonal cash flow cycle? So this is a great example just to kind of like understand seasonality of a business, right? So if you look at December, uh, you know, if you look at her net cash flow, right? So she has about 4,469 of, of just cash that's, you know, that's positive cash going into her bank account, right? So extra money that's going in. But if you look at January, um, once she starts having to kind of like spend more money on additional supplies and inventory, um, you start seeing that January, she took a huge hit in her business bank statement, right? So 12K, 12K money ended up moving out of that account, right? So some, depending on the business, uh, this could be a huge issue as well, right? So a lot of this is, uh, you know, because of growth, right? Uh, people want a certain product. And if you're not able to fulfill that product or fulfill those needs, then they'll go somewhere else, unfortunately, right? So really by having a cash flow statement, you can really anticipate what these periods look like and find ways to either attain additional capital through, uh, usually the best tool is uh, finding a business loan of some kind, um, getting a line of credit through a bank. So there's different tools out there to kind of help mitigate a lot of these risks. But what a cash flow statement does, it, it's really just kind of like helps you mitigate a lot of these foreseeable occurrences, especially for seasonal businesses like this, right? So retail, especially, um, you have your ups and downs, uh, you have your holiday seasons where people buy more and where you, you sell more. And if you look at this example as well, from her having this huge strain in, in, in money in January, you see that in February, she ended up pocketing about $4,000. Uh, she ended up making about 16K in total net sales, which is amazing for her net cash flow. So it just, just comes to show that by prepping and being very well organized, 
it can really help anticipate and you can further keep just like moving your business forward. So the best, the best practices for building business savings. So we'll talk about that now as well. So how can you make a budget work for your business? So the biggest thing that I tell a lot of individuals that are either going through cash flow uh, issues or they're just trying to just make their business, take their business to the next level, right? A lot of it really just comes down to budgeting as well. And what makes it really hard is if you don't have some sort of accounting system or a financial management system in place, it's really hard to budget from that period of time, right? So usually that's why it's, it's very important to have something in place before you can actually start talking about some of these other things as well. So business budgets uh, are very useful for a business because they really help you trim the costs associated with certain different things uh, in your business. Um, and in this example, uh, most business budgets are balanced. So it's your revenues, money, your expenses, and, and your, net pro your net income, your net profit, right? So the best budgets use the nuts and bolts operational data, data that you can get from your accounting system or your bookkeeping that, that you deal with with every day with your every day in your running of your business, right? So this is really about understanding like all of your line items, right? So you know what? I'm spending too much on this. I need to cut back. I'm spending too much on this certain thing, that certain thing. Um, I hire too many employees or, you know what, because of a certain, you know, and this is a reality in, in, in many states as well with, uh, you know, like wage increases or it's a state mandated saying like, you know, the minimum wage has gone up in certain different states. It's ensuring that you can either maintain your current employees that you currently have within your business and really just understanding, hey, if, if wages are going up, right, how can I adapt my business to better, uh, better handle these additional costs as well, right? How much do I need to raise prices for or buy in order to like maintain my budget, right? For my business. So how can you make your budget, a budget work for your business? So things that you have to do whenever you are creating a budget is you have to be very conservative, right? When, when, when budgeting revenues, um, you have to include a small contingency for unexpected expenses to increase your chances for maintaining a positive cash flow. So really the rule of thumb that I tell a lot of individuals that I work with is that you should always have at least three months of operational expenses within any period of time within your business bank account, right? So if for whatever reason you, you're not selling a single thing, right? You should, your business bank account should have at least three months of being able to kind of like pay off all of your expenses, your rent, uh, your utilities, um, employees, whatever it may be for at least three months. Um, a lot of people suggest doing that for six months, but I, sometimes that can be very unrealistic because that, that does add up to a lot of money. And depending on the scale of the business, it might not be feasible. So at the very least, what I tell a lot of individuals is, hey, you know what, as long as you have at least three months of operational money within that bank account, you're usually in a good spot, right? To handle like any kind of like emergency or sharp change within your business. Um, so if you, look at your, if, you, if you look at the pandemic, for example, uh, this is something that no one could foresee. And, you know, it ended up changing businesses, right? So a lot of businesses went, ended up going bust within the first month just because they didn't have this tool in place to kind of like really ride out the storm. And, you know, and we're still riding out the storm right now. So being having a budget is a very important element for your business. Um, so budget your revenues on a cash basis as well. So as I mentioned earlier, best tool to do this is to look at your business bank account and just to kind of see the ebbs and flows of the money coming in and out of your business. Uh, use your budget as a roadmap and refer to it often as well and share your budget with your employees as well. So staff who understand the business goals are more likely to have ideas to help you reach them. So honestly, the best sources of information as well are your employees as well. Um, a lot of business owners really think that they're in it by themselves and in some aspects you are, right? But if you do have employees, a lot of them can really kind of like inform you on where you may have like wasteful spending, right? They may say, hey, you know what? If uh, let's say that you own a restaurant, hey, uh, an employee might say, hey, this one thing on the menu isn't selling at all, right? I don't think we should carry it. Um, maybe we sell like one or two a week or, or whatever, right? So tapping into your employees as far as like, what is a good expense and what isn't a good expense is very crucial as a business owner. Um, since in many aspects, you don't have, uh, you can't really kind of zoom in or magnify into a lot of the 
day-to-day issues within your business as well. So why is the budget so critical for your business? So a budget helps you predict cash flow and avoid surprises, as I mentioned earlier. A budget shows your lenders how you plan to pay back a future loan as well. So by having a budget, it really just kind of like highlights everything that your business is currently doing. Um, A budget kind of like tells the lender, hey, you know what? This is my anticipated expenses. This is what I'm planning on. You know, this is this is like in in April of of this coming month. This is how much money I foresee going out of my business. And uh, because of that, I'm going to have this much money left over for me to pay back a loan. Right. So by having these kind of this kind of behavior and having this kind of system in place, it really just tells the lender, hey, you know what? I am a very mature business owner. I'm I'm incredibly responsible. I'm managing my money on a day to day basis, month to month basis. And I can I can show you uh, in in this document how I'm a safe bet and a safe risk for for me to receive um, 100K, a million dollars, whatever it may be in, in funding as well. A budget quickly highlights areas that need improvement as well, right? So if you don't have any business savings or if you're, if you're constantly, if your bank statements are constantly getting close to negative or you're having a lot of cash flow issues, um, having a budget does kind of like highlight the areas that where you may have an issue with, right? Um, so if you do have a budget and when, if, and if you compare it to what you're actually spending, right? Let's say that I budget out what April's going to look like, but then once April is over, I found out that compared to my budget, it's incredibly different. That means that something is wrong within my business, right? As a business owner, I don't have a full grasp or a full understanding about how, you know, how everything is moving within my business as well. So as a business owner, what I have to do next is really just kind of go in there and find out. So I predicted this, but it didn't happen. Why? So by being able to kind of look in there and take corrective actions to in, within your business, you can further kind of like um, remove a lot of the risk in ultimately having bad cash flow situations and getting to like a, an emergency state within your business as well. If it's a small variance, then that means that you're doing really good, right? If you're close to your budget at the end of the month, that means that you have a solid grasp within your uh, of your business. And, you know, if it's a small difference, then you can understand, hey, uh, it's a small difference. Why was it a little bit different, right? And you could, and this is something that's easier to predict because you can say, oh, it's because of this one, it, with this one line item, or it's because, you know what, I'm making more sales that I didn't anticipate. A lot of these things can be good, but if it's a small change, that's not really something to be alarmed about. But if it is huge, then you definitely want to like take a closer look as a business owner, because that means that there is something in there that is eluding you and uh, ultimately could be a huge risk for your business because you can't anticipate it. And that could lead to problems in the future as well. So a budget helps you create, uh, helps you keep your operations running very smoothly as well. So as I mentioned earlier, um, just being able to kind of track everything helps run, helps things run very smoothly. And a budget helps you pr- project uh, your future uh, and take actionable steps. So Having a budget really just kind of helps you prep for the future. And by being able to know or what you expect tomorrow or the following month, you can prep for that. And you can say like, all right, this is my sales goals for, for next month. This is how much I'm budgeting for that as well. And it really just kind of helps you stick to that budget. And if things go a little bit different, um, you can at least anticipate a lot of these costs as well. So how can you actually build up business savings? So prioritizing needs over wants. And I tell a lot of individuals this as well as I work with them. So they'll be like, hey, Luis, but um, you know what? One thing that my business really needs, I really need this uh, new top of the line um, payment system, or I need this new amazing espresso machine because it's going to do this and this for my business, or I'm going to be able to do certain other things, right? So what I tell a lot of these business owners is, is this something that your business needs right now, right? As you're planning out your year or your, your month to month on a, on a, you know, on a given basis, right? Is this, is this something that's going to help or add more value to your business than it is going to take away, right? Because what ends up happening with a lot of needs, right? Or a lot of wants in this case, is that a lot of these tend to be huge items that can sink a lot of money from your bank account as well, right? So because you bought this really fancy espresso machine, um, 
does that put you at risk the following month from being able to pay all of your bills on time, all of your utilities, um, or even applying for a, a loan that you're looking for, right? So what is the risk associated with taking a certain action, right? So by, you know, having this organized system in a cash flow statement, it really helps you understand how it's going to impact your business. So I always, I always encourage for business owners to take, make small changes over time, right? Uh, go little by little, uh, you know, big giant steps lead to greater risk in them for the most part. So being able to just adjust and build up on your business little by little is usually a really safe way to avoid a lot of risk within your business as well. Sure, you can make great sweeping changes as well, but you have to be prepared for it as well. And the only way to be prepared for that is to really have a solid understanding of your business's financials for the most part. Use digital tools to automate your savings as well. So what I tell a lot of business owners as well is that if you have some sort of system to automate a lot of these things as well, definitely do it, right? So I recommend that you look into apps. So there's a bunch of amazing apps out there, like one of them being like Expensify, for example, that can really help you kind of like track a lot of your business expenses, help manage all of your receipts. Um, as I mentioned, there were a bunch of other programs as well, like Mint, Scoro that I mentioned earlier, that can really automate a lot of these processes for you as well. And set specific time-bound savings goals as well. So additionally to all of these things as well, um, I do encourage a lot of business owners to start you know, saving some money in their business bank account as well. Um, just as like a, you know, just like personal finance, it's always uh, very important to save at least 10 to 20% of your money within your business and just push it forward, right? Because this is money that you can use later on for seasonal expenses, um, low points or high points in the business where you have to invest more money in your business in order to kind of get the results that you want to further scale up your business as well. And then, so as you keep saving this money, so where do you use it, right? What can you do with this money that in your business bank account that you've been saving up? So one of the big things I always tell a lot of clients is that pay off past due bills and high interest debt. So I've met a lot of individuals over the course, over, over time that have taken very expensive loans, right? Um, they find an online lender and they have like a 20, 30% interest loan. So if you have this excess cash flow, it's great to pay down some of these things that are taking away more, that are taking more money out of your bank account as well, because ultimately it is a, it is a savings measure as you keep paying this debt down as well. And more importantly as well, if you have a lot of credit card debt as well, pay that down as well, if you can, right? Reward employees and customers, right? Having some sort of uh, incentive program helps you retain those customers long-term and helps you retain those employees as well invest in the next phase of your business. So by being able to have business savings, it makes it a lot easier for you to go to an investor or a lender and say, hey, you know what? Look at all this money that I have in my bank account. Um, do you think I should be, do you think I could be able to get a, to get a uh, $100,000 loan, 50K loan, a uh, million dollar loan, right? Because what a, lot of, what a lot of lenders like to do is that they will, a lot of lenders will give you money when you don't need it. But when you do actually need it, they won't give it to you because they'll say like, oh, well, you have a lot of money right now. That's awesome. Yeah, sure. You're not a risk. Um, you can pay me back. Here's some money, right? As compared to an individual that might be in a very like emergency state where they say, I have no money left in my bank account. I really need some money right now. Uh, can you please lend me some money? And the lender will look at you and say, well, if I give you this money, so what's the risk associated with lending to you, right? If you what is the chance that you're going to miss the, you're going to miss the first payment on this bank loan or, you know, it's going to be a lot higher just because there is nothing to kind of safeguard that, that bank or that lender to that risk. And ultimately um, as your business grows and, and you're saving more money, this is something that you can use to increase your take-home pay. So what's not to love about being able to make more money from your own business, right? So Liz's saving strategy. So, so Liz follows business savings best practices strategies to maximize her business, business's ability to take advantage of opportunities uh, to reinvest in her business and have a smooth monthly business operations, even during negative cash flows. So those best practices strategies, um, if you look at this slide is, so best practices to have at least three months of operating expenses in the business's operating cash bank account 
to help smooth out negative cash flow months as well. And usually as a rule of thumb, it's having three months of operational expenses within your bank account and being able to save at least 20% of that money and push it forward on a month to month basis, if possible. If it's less, that's okay, right? But as long as you're saving something within your business, it's, it's great to kind of keep building up that, that cushion for your business for emergencies and even for growth opportunities in the near future, as I mentioned earlier, through uh, lending opportunities, et cetera. All right, thank you so much, Luis. I think it's really valuable to think about how a budget interacts with your ability to save money to kind of build those savings um, and especially figuring out what to do with that money once you've saved it and to how that can impact your cash flow, I think is really helpful. So now we're gonna launch another poll to see um, what you all think uh, about Liz's situation, kind of going back to our example. Um, so based on what Louise has shared about uh, how cash flow interacts with savings and how maybe uh, Liz, our example entrepreneur, could use her savings, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this poll uh, to, to test your knowledge a little bit. So. Given everything you've learned, especially Liz's example situation with her uneven cash flow, what do you think she should do with her savings? Um, you know, we have a few different options here for you to choose from of different things that maybe she should do um, with that savings. So, you know, she could um, invest in some equipment, um, some really high end equipment or get her uh, savings kind of increased uh, with for larger investment opportunities. She could get uh, extra inventory for her product, for her bath bombs, um, or she could replace her phone that she uses for work. So a few different options. Um, I'm just interested to see what you all think here. So we'll give you another second or two. All right, we'll close the poll and share back. And Louise, I think uh, we have a really smart group of us today. Um, Honestly, so. <laughs> wow, impressive. Good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I think everybody, the, the thing that's tricky about this is that there's, it's a really interesting, uh, difficult question for small business owners to know what the right decision is. It can be really tough to know, but with all these competing priorities of business ownership, which, which thing to do with the money. But I think everybody here, you know, agrees that keeping that for um, increased savings for that next large opportunity is a really good, good idea. So, all right. Excellent. So next we'll look at trusted methods of anticipating new expenses within your business. So as I mentioned earlier, a cash flow statement is incredibly useful because it helps identify working capital needs. It predicts lean times and it helps diagnose the current state of the business as well. And it helps increase the profitability by identifying excess cash periods. So next, um, there is a very strong concept that I always encourage a lot of business owners do know about in greater detail. And that is what we call the cash flow cycle. So if, if you do take anything from today's lesson is definitely understanding how the cash flow cycle works. So this is something that is incredibly important to every business owner, regardless of the size, the industry that you're in it's important to know what this cycle looks like. And it looks like this. So um, within a given period of time, usually about 60 days is what the average cash flow cycle looks like, is it's really kind of like the, the movement of cash within your business. So we always start at the very top. So you as a business owner have money, right? And this cash you use to, to, to buy stocks or you, you, you stock order from suppliers, right? So you buy products or you offer a service, whatever that may be. So you get these supplies. And then what you do with these supplies is you use production and you turn it into stocks or you turn the, this supplies into products, right? And then with those products, uh, you, you hold them in your space, your store, whatever that may be, until you find a customer that is going to buy those things as well. So then the product gets sold to the customer and the customer pay for their expenses ultimately and either through cash or through a credit card or whatever. And that, that money ultimately comes back to you as a business owner as well to reinvest and basically make this chain or this circle uh, happen all over again, right? It's a cycle. Usually this cycle tends to be about 60 days on average for most businesses. But as a business owner, what you really have to understand about your business is what does your own personal cash flow cycle look like, right? 
So as you're going through this cash flow cycle, is it slow or is it fast? The best case scenario for any business owner is you want to be able to buy your supplies, turn it into products, find customers, sell it to customers, and get paid back as quickly as possible, right? The faster that you can make this wheel turn, the more money or the more positive cash flow is coming into your bank account at a, at a given period of time, right? If you can lower that number of days into, for instead of 60 days to 30 days, awesome, right? That means that the faster you can make the spin, the more money you're going to be making. But ultimately, what ends up happening along the way is that money tends to get stuck somewhere in this chain. Somewhere in this circle, your money as a business owner gets stuck, or in the worst case scenarios, it can get wasted and lost completely, right? So, um, and we'll look at every single one of these like issues. So you may have products or, 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 or supplies that could go bad, right? If you're working in the restaurant industry or if you're working in the food industry, there are things that you can't keep forever. They will ultimately go bad. And that's stuff that you're going to be losing out completely. It's going to completely fall off and it's just a complete loss. Um, or you may have um, you may have a lot of stock of a certain item or a certain product that you just can't sell because no one's buying it, right? So uh, I like to I like to point to the salon problem, or an, uh, I call it the salon issue with a lot of business owners, um, because uh, how many times have you gone to your uh, get get got your hair cut or go to the barbershop or whatever that may be, and I've seen this many, many times with a lot of clients that I visited over the couple of years where I walk into their shop uh, because I'm, I want to get a haircut and I see, you know, they have a lot of product on the wall, right? They have shampoos and waxes and gels. And I go up and I take a closer look and I see that there's like dust, you know, there's a lot of dust on top of some of these products because you know what, they've been sitting in there for a very long time, right? So how often are these, are these items moving in and out of the business, right? And I've, I've met a lot of, uh, a lot of entrepreneurs that say, oh, Luis, this is like a really hot product and it sells, it sells itself, right? But then as I look at it, I see that there's a lot of dust on these products as well. So as a business owner, how can you cut down costs in stock? Like how to better understand what sells and what doesn't sell. And obviously by being organized, it helps you really understand what's moving a lot easier than by just eyeballing it in many times as well. Because that is, that is money that is essentially stuck on your shelves, right? So the best thing is that you, you then sell it to your customer. That's great. And if you get paid in cash, even better, right? Because that means that you can use that money immediately to buy more stock and move that chain fast as well again. But if you could, you could also be dealing with like contracts or even, even uh, credit cards as well. Uh, and that may take some time. That'll essentially just make that, that cycle a little bit longer. And that's okay, right? As long as you have a solid understanding and enough working capital to really keep this chain moving as you're waiting for that money to come back to you ultimately again. So I do want to kind of like emphasize this is that as a business owner, you should have a really strong understanding of this concept. Find out how long does it take for you, for your money to come back to you after you kind of like invest into product or services within your business as well. Because the faster that you can make this turn, the more money you're going to make. And as a business owner, you want to definitely understand if your money is getting stuck anywhere along this, this circle. So how can you anticipate unexpected expenses? So having emergency savings, as I mentioned earlier, helps a ton. Look for long-term patterns. Find out exactly what's happening, what's selling, what isn't selling. Um, what are things that you can continue to add to your business, right? What are things that uh, aren't working or are working? Assume the best, but prepare for the worst as well. So best case scenario and worst case scenario. I always tell a lot of entrepreneurs to, you know, expect the best, but you know what, if the worst does come to happen, what is it going to cost your business to do that or go through that experience as well? And then identify outside capital resources before you need them as well. So as I mentioned earlier, a lot of lenders will gladly lend to you when you don't need it. So it's good to secure those resources as you anticipate you needing them in the near future rather than reacting and, and approaching to these resources when you can't have access to them anymore because uh, you're just a higher risk because of, uh, you know, you're, you, may not have, you may not have any more money anymore or you're running out of money and, and it doesn't look good for your business. How can you respond to unexpected expenses? So use emergency savings to adapt as well. 
uh, get creative with credit with creditors and vendors. So you can get supplier credit uh, to pay back at a later time. Uh, once you have a good relationship with those those suppliers as well, so it can save you it can save you time and money. Uh, prioritize your expenses and communicate with employees and customers as well. Find out what are the things that employees or the customers see as far as trends. What are things that customers want? What are things that they don't want? And how can you adapt? So Liz ended up adapting to her business. So at the beginning of the pandemic, people stopped buying luxury goods like bath bombs and shipping times more than doubled. Not only were sales down, but customers were frustrated by shipping times as well. Liz had to pivot until sales picked back up. So she got creative. She used her existing supplies and savings to start making hand soaps, which she was able to sell locally to essential businesses like nursing homes, dentists, and veterinarians. Uh, thank goodness she had enough savings to help her pivot into a hand soap and to support herself until online sales of her luxury items picked back up again. So making sure that having an, this, this, this cushion, right, is very key to your business because you never know when something might happen that might negatively impact or even change, completely change your business, right? Having some sort of cushion can really help you, right, you know, revitalize your business by either pivoting it, taking it in a new direction until things change, or may, maybe it's your new line of work in the near future as well. Uh, you may you may find more success in the pivot that you may find out. So as a business owner, kind of like what, you, what I always encourage a lot of individuals is to have a cushion and always look the look for the best opportunities to kind of like continue growing and scaling your business. And finally, we get to working capital. So the value of working capital to smooth out cash flow. So how should you evaluate your working capital needs? So before applying for any kind of working capital loan, make sure you can answer the following questions. How much do I need and why? You should always have a clear understanding as far as how much money do I actually need and what am I gonna use it for? As soon as you work with a lender and, and you say, I think I need a lender, it's a, kind of like a huge red flag for a lender. And they'll say, uh, well, I, if you think you need this much, um, why is that, right? Saying I think doesn't really mean that you have a solid understanding of your business. So you should really be able to highlight, I need this much money, I'm, I'm going to use it for X, Y, and Z. How much can I qualify for as well? How much does the capital cost as well? It's very important. And what do the repayment terms work best with my cash flow cycle as well? So if a lender says, I'm going to give you this much money, but it's going to, this loan is going to cost you about $5,000 a month uh, as far as a loan payment or a thousand, three thousand, can my business handle that additional expense? Sure, I'm gonna use that money to grow my business, but in the in the meantime, as I'm growing within the next first one to six months, can my business uh, absorb that expense as well? Because in many cases, you may find that capital or even a loan could be more hurtful because it does put a strain on your cash flow over overall. So, what business characteristics could affect your working capital? So. These slides will be available to everyone after today's presentation, so there's no need to take down all the details in the chart. But just to get a better understanding as far as things or questions that you should ask yourself before looking for working capital as well. Um, are you mostly cash sales? Uh, do you sell completed products? Do you manufacture goods? Do you sell perishable items? Um, is your business well established? Is your business seasonal? So all of these things could lead to the question is, do I need financing in the near future as well? And if so, when do I need to start applying for it? Most financing takes about a month to get um, some faster, but at least you should set, a, set yourself at least a month in advance before you actually should get access to these funds as well. So save yourself some time and apply earlier rather than getting to that point where you actually do need it and you may not have access to it as quickly as you want. So what are some common sources of working capital? As I mentioned earlier, your business savings, very good. Um, you can, there are grants out there as well. Not a lot of them, but they do exist. Um, small business financing is going to be kind of like your go-to for the most part, as far as uh, the ability to get financing uh, tends to be the most reliable one. And then personal equity injection is if you, on the, on the personally, you could also inject money into your own business from your own personal savings as well. That's something that you could also do. Uh, but for the most part, a lot of businesses tend to approach um, a bank, a CDFI lender uh, like ourselves for these sources of funds. 
And then here are a couple of different financing options that you can take a look at. Um, and really what we want to stress here is that there are so many different ways to get financing into your business. But as a business owner, what you really want to highlight and kind of like look at is what works best for me, right? What can I apply for? What works best for me? Uh, because if you look at this, you can see all of the different interest rates. You can see all of the approval periods as well. Because um, maybe I need money tomorrow. You could you could apply for a merchant merchant cash advance, but just know that there are risks associated to every decision that you take, right? There they could because you want the money right now. It could cost you more money in the near future, right? Because uh, it's very expensive financing. So you have to find out what is the best financing for me as a business owner right now. Because the more you can prepare for this, the cheaper it'll be over time. So I always encourage that. So Liz's bath bombs were so popular, she can't make them fast enough to keep up with demand. She is looking into co-manufacturing them, but she doesn't have enough savings to, to upfront the costs. Every day she waits, she's losing sales to competitors because she doesn't have enough stock. So what should she do? All right, so now we're going to test your knowledge a little bit again here right at the end. So based on all those different working capital options, we're interested to know which option you think Liz should choose to help her make this uh, make this new move in her business and kind of grow forward. So we'll give you a couple minutes to think about, you know, a, a bank loan is probably the lowest interest rate, but has the highest criteria, um, you know, credit credit box and Maybe a CDF Islander is more flexible uh, and might work a little more quickly, but the interest rate might be slightly higher than a bank. And with merchant cash advance, as Luis was saying, there's certain risks associated um, with the fees and the, the structure there. And depending on the cash flow cycle, daily ACH might work really well, or it might really hurt cash flow. Um, so just interested to see what y'all think about this. Um, so we'll give you a couple more minutes to answer the question and then we'll share back and see what everybody thought. All right, looks like we're still getting some responses. All right, then we'll cut that off and share back. All right, so we had responses in every category, but it looks like people are most interested in a community development financial institution. Awesome. Yeah. All right, um, so the interesting thing here is that, as Luis was saying, um, there's not really necessarily a wrong answer. You know, there's moments where right. each of these options could be the right thing, right, Luis? Yeah, that's correct. It really depends on your needs, but for the most part, it's really what is the best for you. And But what I really encourage is if you are prepared and if you can anticipate these things in the future, it'll be a lot cheaper because you can prep for that financing in advance and you can take some of the slower options like uh, bank financing or even CDFI financing as well. Um, and save yourself a lot of money in the process as well by being able to anticipate these costs. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, and I think it's super helpful to think about financing in terms of what it does to your cash flow. And that's Definitely. something uh, that's something that we don't always hear about, but is a really helpful lens, I think, uh, to help small business owners make those decisions. So thanks for all of your uh, insights today, Luis. I appreciate you sharing all of this. So uh, we want to stay on just for a minute or two to answer any questions. If any folks have follow-up questions for Luis, I can also share just quickly that we will be sending this recording and a couple of templates that Luis has mentioned. So for cash flow statement and budget template, we'll send those out via email uh, later today. So you can feel free to make use of those. Um, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to type those into the chat. We've already gotten a couple questions, Excellent. Um, but happy to answer a couple more. Um, so let's see. The first question we had um, is somebody is already using QuickBooks, which is great. We noted Excellent. that during during our poll, we had plenty of people using um, using accounting softwares already. Um, and this person's hoping to understand how to generate a cash flow statement through a software like that. And of course, we can't do you know like a live demo <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with the situation right now. But um, Luis, do you happen to know with with QuickBooks or with any of these accounting softwares, there should be a pretty user friendly way um, to automate demo, uh, you know downloading a cash flow statement based on the information you input Definitely. into the system, right? Yeah, definitely. You can definitely, you can actually have a QuickBooks generate that for you. Um, just because it's such a specific question, however, I will recommend that if you can please email me at the advising and opportunity fund email, I'd be happy to answer that in greater detail for you. Awesome. Great. So but it's great to know uh, that in general, if you're using accounting or bookkeeping systems, 
they should you shouldn't have to manually create your cash flow statement. Those two Correct. things can go hand in hand. That's great. Um, and yes, definitely uh, email Louise if you want some one-on-one -on -one help with that. Um, so let's see. And then um, we had this as just tangentially related, a last question before we go. Um, somebody's wondering about resources available in other parts of the country, not just on the West Coast. So our, our partners for this webinar are based in California. And so if you're based in California, definitely check out fundingfresno.com um, and check out the Central Valley Community Foundation for resources to support your business um, in, in Central California. But for folks in other parts of the country, um, and Luis, I'd be interested what you think. I would recommend uh, checking local municipalities for resources. So your city, county, and state government websites, the economic development centers will have information for small business support, kind of no matter where you are in the country. Um, but Luis, are there any other ideas you have of places people could go to yeah, just definitely. learn more? Yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you want to learn more about Castle, for example, or anything that was mentioned in this presentation, I will... Oh, looks like we lost Luis's audio there really quick. Huh. Um, so we can send out additional resources uh, for uh, people outside of California who are looking for financing or other small business support. Uh, but I think that's all the time we're going to have for today. I appreciate everybody's engagement with our polls and with our questions. Um, and uh, we will see you at our next webinar. Be on the lookout for that information coming to you soon. Thanks everybody for your time. Thank you so much to our partners and Luis, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. My pleasure. All right, thanks everybody, bye-bye.